you arise and you are mad. You are so mad, you feel like Dr. Kuira and Dege Tombono, one hour of Zimbabwe. No doctor, one of my bed, I cannot nobody vibe up for it, but you just have to chill out. Just chill Some out. Some builders can give you a cheaper quotation the for you. Cheaters or something, or the half of what is actually needed to complete this structure. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Simply Rhoda and this is my YouTube channel. If you are new to this channel, honey, thank you so much for clicking today. And while you are here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This video is especially for people who are building. It's either you're building in Zimbabwe or any other parts of the world, especially for Africans in diaspora. I wanna be specific on that. I know most people may want to start a project back home, build back home, but but there are so many things that they are unaware will crop up once they start building you know so today i'm gonna be um, addressing some of this problem with you since i am in the process of constructing my second home in zimbabwe so i thought it's high time i share some of these things because when you see somebody building people will just think oh it's easy or you have money or you want it takes a lot of patience it takes a lot in you it's draining it's all sorts you can think of all the negative things you can think of are part of uh, uh, construction constructing in another country or in back in your country especially in your absence so today i want to be specific and my target audience are mainly zimbabweans in diaspora so if you are zimbabwean and you are trying or you are planning to start constructing a house in zimbabwe this video is for Why? you so that if you can start that beautiful project of yours you have that dream house in your mind but today i'm going to be addressing some of the things with you that you should be aware and be prepared for before you start building so well the first step is to acquire that land uh, there are various ways to find this. There are various ways to buy land in Zimbabwe. You can either approach developers, and uh, I think buying from developers is much cheaper and you have better terms as compared to buying from the third party. Me personally, I wouldn't actually advise people to buy stands through a third party or stuff like that i would think it is better to buy from the developer and uh, that way there are so many things that you can avoid in the process then okay let's look at after you buy your stand the next thing you need is to have your plan drawn uh this is quite an easy um process you know having your plan drawn is an easy process but anyway it also depends with the place where you want to build i know some developers have a preferred they have a set of plans they need for a specific place like my second property by the way i am not this is the, the property i'm building in zimbabwe at the moment is not my first property i have another one so this is my second property so i've gone through some of the things i'm going to be elaborating here so that you guys may be aware and save much of your time so okay so, now again if you are here the first time please guys just hit that like button because the thing that i'm going to be sharing here you're going to be loving it and it's going to be on your advantage and it's going to save much of your time and you won't need any it's free advice i'm giving you guys because I understand these are some of the things people may not be aware when they are new builders or starting to build something. So here, stay right here, subscribe to the channel, and let's continue. The second thing that you may need, like I've mentioned already, is the plan. So having a plan drawn, I think this is not much of a difficult thing to do. Okay, you can get a plan for you. Um, and like I said, it also depends with the community or the estate that you are going to be building. Some estates, they have their own set of plans that you can choose from because they want they have a standard form or a standard way of how their community should look so they may have their own set that you can choose from this one will be easier because you have things that are there already although they can tell you that you can do some custom you can change some things to be custom according to your liking that is inside the, the the house or the apartment but the outside appearance it will be a kind of uniform or it's 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 a standard for the community so you can't really change anything on that so if you find um an estate like that i think that would be so much easy for you if you are planning to build it would be easier for you so normally drawing plans or if you can't find a community like that, that means you have to come, you have your own dream things that you need in the house. You have your own style you need in the house. You can be inspired by others because now if you go to Zimbabwe, just move around the communities, you'll be surprised. They are beautiful, beautiful.
beautiful houses and you can be inspired and the good thing i like about these people who, who have already completed these structures they are not selfish you ask them and approach them they can share all the knowledge they have they are willing to help you so that is another thing you can go online the social media you can see the development that are happening in zimbabwe you can be inspired and that will help you to have your own plan like it, you also have chances to alter some things if you have change of mind as long as the structure hasn't been started so you have to be sure about what you want before they start digging hence if you change your mind that means you'll be losing money you'll be losing material material and stuff like that that means more money will be put in this project and you don't like that so you need to take your time to do this but it's not a difficult process anyway now let's go to the third step that is finding somebody who is going to build it although you have your cute plan and cute dreams and you are imagining yourself in this house but now we need the real structure that's where or where the attention should go because that's where that is the thing that's gonna milk you a lot of money now you have to be really really careful when you start to this so you start by choosing the builder so what I can advise you guys when you are choosing someone to build your house find somebody who has reputable um, referrals somebody who has done something that you may have seen if you are not in Zimbabwe right now I'm sure you can have your trusted family or somebody you are you can trust to help you do this uh, for you, you know, find somebody with a referral, so find somebody who has done something, a structure that you can see, you know, so you can judge by that rather than just judging from the word of mouth or what you can see from somebody when they are advertising themselves because it's easy for somebody to just walk around, take a picture of buildings or houses that are being constructed, not by him, and put them on their uh, social medias. And once you're outside, you may not be aware that it's a lie or what, you may choose a building according to what you see on their profiles or whereas it's not this shouldn't be the way for you to choose somebody to build your house I feel like you should find somebody with notable referrals somebody whom can be referred who had done something that you, you can, can also see. ask the people that have worked with that builder for their opinions what they think about him what you should expect you know your expectations this one I think is really helpful it's really major because it's gonna save your pocket it's gonna save you 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 from a lot of depression and sleepless nights you know i i have this i had this and from experience i'm sure you can avoid it now let's go to the fifth the next thing now once you find your builder the next thing you may want now is the quotation now when you talk about the quotation that's why i say you should always find somebody or find a builder who has experience building in the community that you bought your stand or the community that you are going to be building your your, your structure this way will help you a lot and save your time because they will have um they know they know the things or based maybe somebody in your community has had a plan that's similar to yours so for them when they are making these quotations they are not all going to be assumptions or guessing and you know because when you come to quotations it's not everybody who can give you the exact thing but it's rather better to get a quotation that is closer to completion or that you are uh, you need to add a few not that you are given a, a, a quotation of half of what is actually needed to complete this structure this why with is disheartening you guys. start this you need a budget you budget money to buy materials so once you get the quotation the quotation is something that can give you an idea of at least how much you are looking at so when you get your quotation and the figure on the quotation what I strongly advise you is do not just save up to exact the amount that is on the quotation because in most cases it doesn't work it doesn't work that like that probably you need to save extra more maybe uh, more than half you need to, to to save maybe one and a half of that total amount you know so that you will be on the safe space because what normally happens is when you save right to the note there are other things that come up told that cement is finished we may be told that uh, we need this and that your budget was just exactly the amount that you have seen on the quotation you find yourself in depression you find yourself having sleepless nights or thinking that oh the builders are cheaters or something or they are selling your cement which I am not really ruling out these things may happen that's why I say you should find a builder with a notable or with a good reputation when you you are going 
when you are building, especially while you are in diaspora, you need somebody you can trust on. Things happen on building sites. You cannot really rule out that you are not, people are not going to steal from you. That can happen. It can happen or it may not happen. So don't rule out. Just have an open mind when it comes to building. It can save yourself a lot of time and depression. Now let's move on to the next. So when you are getting these quotations, like I said, when you are getting these quotations, always make your budget a surplus. Leave room for all this. Like for me, when I was building, when I got the quotation, yes, I was working around my quotation the first time, and I, it would throw me in frenzy. Like each time I get a message that, oh, we need this, oh, we are left with this, oh, material, yeah, shorter, oh, to me cement, as that's what I You know, these are things that would put me, throw me into anger because I was like, you gave me the quotation, you guys, but now why are you telling me about other things? You know, this, so to spare yourself some time and some energy, just have that extra out of your budget. Have that extra just left for this. I remember when I got a quotation from one builder, because also when you're looking for a builder or the people who are going to work for you, I can say when you're looking for this quotation, do not depend on one person. Try to go around, find um, three or four people to do quotations for you who are also reputable. Then at the end, you can compare and find which one you can work with. But also do not just choose the cheaper price because like I said, some builders can give you a cheaper quotation for you to attract you so that you can pick them because they know for sure that you are shopping around for builders, right? So they will try to make their um, quotation attractive by maybe uh, reducing the amount that is the actual, uh, reducing the amount of the things that are needed to be put in this project uh, and you choose them because they are cheaper. Do not be, do not be lured by such because it's a tactic, it's a technique some builders used to be chosen or to be picked. Then when you started this structure, they will be the ones that will be calling you all the time or telling you that they need this, each each or shorter, this one is missing, we need extra, we need this, we need that, and you put yourself in depression. So also be aware of builders like that. Compare the prices and see. You must compare. If their prices are like around or you no, know, circling around the same figure or similar figures, that would be good for you. Okay, now let's go to the next step. Uh, next step. Now, I know you may not have time to be in Zimbabwe to run around to buy these materials by yourself, but what I can strongly advise you is to find a trusted person who can do these things for you. I usually know that some people, like for myself, I, I trust my family, my family members, but I know it may not work with ev uh, everyone else out there. For some people, they cannot even trust their family members because their family members are the ones that may disappoint them. So I know there is that person you can trust. If you can't find that person within your family, I'm sure there are other people that you can pay to do such job for you in Zimbabwe right now. There are people who provide these services to do this for you on your behalf. So what I say is when you hire or when you, 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 you have a construction uh, company or a person who is going to build for you, what I strongly, strongly advise you guys, do not let the person who is going to build your house be the one to be in charge of buying the materials. This one is a no, no, no. From experience, it's a no, no, no. You'd rather supply them with material and let them just do their job. Do not give them money to buy the material. I will repeat again, do not give the builders money to buy the material. Just give them their money for labor, that's all. And another thing that you should be aware nowadays in Zimbabwe, I don't know it's a style or what, Every quotation you get, the builder will ask for money for food. That means for the duration of their work time at your place, they need to be fed. So they usually include food money, money for food. You need to provide them with food. Yes, it's becoming so rampant. Everything that you do is either roofing, is either building, is either plumbing, is either uh, putting any job. A person, a service provider comes to your house, they are always including food money money for food i don't know why but it's kind of like it's a thing right now in zimbabwe every quotation will have that so for me 
I also had, um, you know, when you're working with this, when you start this, in pro this project, you really have to be strong. <laughs> you really have to be strong, guys. I don't want to lie. Because there are moments that you feel like, okay, you get a quotation, uh, the builders give you this, and you save up to this. And the next thing, you're getting a message, we need more, we need this, this one has run out, we need extra. You feel like, okay, you are so angry to the extent that you feel like, ah, you know, there are times you feel like you want to fight somebody. And you feel like okay, Doctor No Kira Dege to end up Zimbabwe. Quite a titan of it. There are moments you can have that. Of course, building is not easy. If somebody has ever told you that building or running a project of building in Zimbabwe is easy, mm, think twice, guys. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not for the weak heart. Anyway, if your your heart is weak, once you start this project, your heart will become stronger. Unoto simba, ana inoto simba. Because building in Zimbabwe is not a joke. It's not a joke. There are so many problems that comes with that. But anyway, don't let those problems stop you from building. I'm just telling you so that you'll be aware. There are some things that you can avoid, honestly. There are some things you can avoid once you start building in Zimbabwe. There are a lot of things you can avoid, like... Uh, uh, I've mentioned some of them. I think you can go on and listen. I've mentioned a lot of things that you can try to avoid. And there are also other things you can't avoid. You can't avoid, but you just have to chill out. Just chill out because these things will come either you like it or not. You face these things. You will. Because uh, sometimes you may think like, okay, can I just sell this house? I'm giving up. I'm not going to construct it. But anyway, it's just a phase. And this phase will surely pass. And you'll be angry. I'm not saying it's every day you'll be smiling. No. You'll be, you may be smiling one minute because they show you that our progress and things are working out the way you want. You know, the next thing, a problem will arise and you are mad. You are so mad. You feel like, Dr. nobody buy purple. Leave that construction site. I don't want to see you. I'm going to look for somebody. And the next thing, you are working together again. These are things that happen on a daily basis. And I'm quite sure that these builders... They are aware of these things. They know. They, they've gone through such. So for them, they're calm. I remember in my last project, I mean my current project, because uh, yes, uh, I would be told, ah, tukuna shakati, we need shakati, shakati chapera. And I'm like, what? What are you telling me? I just bought it. And you know, and, like when you're buying these things, they need to be delivered to your place, right? So when you're buying them, you are going to pay transportation fees to deliver these things. And the next thing the person will tell you, I should. Yes, no matter how many things you are going to buy, you still have to pay transportation fees. So it's some of these things, the miscellaneous things, the extra things that will even make the project cost you more you know, than what you have actually budgeted for. That's why I strongly want you guys that when you are budgeting and when you are budgeting according to uh, the... the um, the quotation you must always put more extra on that quotation so that you may be on the safe zone sometimes it may not be enough but it can help you to always have that extra when you are budgeting for your construction unless if you are building stage by stage whereby you are waiting for money and stuff like that but i will strongly warn you guys that you gather your money around and maybe start by buying all the materials that won't go bad or that won't be affected by the changing of seasons or weather. You know, uh, you buy them in bulk. Buy some, I know some nowadays in Zimbabwe, when you are at a certain state or stage, you can actually buy these things and. Uh, wait until you need them. You can buy them on lay-by. This is something that I've noticed when I went to Zim Tiles in, uh, um, in Zim, when I went to Zim Tiles to look for my tiles for the roofing, you know, they told me that they can now sell these things on lay-bys. You can, they give you 11 months to complete your payment. So I'm not saying that you should buy everything in one go. Get your quotations, right? Know that the things you are buying are the amount, the required amounts for that specific part right of construction go and buy or buy these things and uh, another thing is when you are buying these things find reputable companies as well because you may not want to buy or have these installments or buy things on labels on a company hence you lose your money right over the month find reputable companies i think it's safer that way you can buy and once you start paying you first to pay the first installment even if the prices of that thing escalates or increases you are not affected because you are already buying you already put 
your money in it. So you won't be affected. So imagine you spend like 11 months paying on lay-by, slow, 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 slow. By the time your project gets to that level, you are ready to go. You have already prepared the things, so you only need to deliver them to the site. And that way is another way also for... Um, making your building plans go smoothly and not feel like you are it's too costly it's too expensive well to be honest it's not easy it's not cheap to construct a building or to build a house in zimbabwe at the moment looking at the current situation you know the current situation in zimbabwe uh, the inflation in zimbabwe it's not easy so if you can find these companies that can provide labors you know for a longer period like 11 months and, and stuff why not go for it go for it because you are still in the process of gathering things up right so you can use these labors as a way for you to you know slowly get there and not have so many strains when it comes to building because ha guys i don't want to lie to you this is my second property and i think the first property i did this 10 years ago i think the feeling is still the same but i feel nowadays things are more expensive and the price just are increasing on daily basis like i want to tell you when i started to construct my current uh house the cement was costing me like costed me like uh 18 dollars per bag but as we progress the cement has gone down at current like today you can buy a bag of cement at 11 dollars but when i did my syllab level three months ago when i did the foundation and the syllab I bought my cement at $18 per bag. How things in Zimbabwe are unpredictable in terms of prices. The cement was going down. At one point, we bought it at $15. It went down to $13. Now, the current price is $11 per bag. Imagine. So you find that I've used yet the stage that I used a lot of cement was the syllab and the foundation, the foundation and the syllab level. I've used a lot of cement, yet I bought the cement at a higher, higher price. Well... So these are things that you should be aware of, guys. So what I'm trying to say to reduce the stress that comes with this, find reputable companies, the tiles, you can find the companies that are reputable. That's all this, buy them at uh, laybys. You can take your time paying for them. And uh, like I mentioned on, once you start the layby, the price increase will not affect you because you have already put your money in it. So that is another bonus. Wow. Planning now that you want to be constructing your house uh, in the next month, and by the time you get to roof level, maybe it will be six, seven months later, but you don't know what happens with the price increases. So to be on the safe side, you can start by investing in that Timber now. Is the same because, you know, the process, there are two, two, um, two levels. There are two parts in constructing a house that are really, really expensive, especially is the foundation and the roofing. These two processes are so expensive. They may want you to think twice about each stage, you know. These stages are too expensive. Each stage will put you in, <laughs> in bad shape. I don't want to lie. Each stage will drain you. So you really need to, be, to have a proper plan. Like I said, if you are thinking right now that you want, you have already gotten a stand, and you are at the stage of maybe drawing your plans and stuff and gathering stuff. So what I may say is buying cement and when you are doing the foundation, you you you, you may want to do it all at, the, at one go. You can't do it in stages. So that means you want to do the syllab level. You can start by buying your stuff now. And while you are doing now, what I can say, guys, invest in laybys for the roofing now. Start to think about that. Don't think about roofing when you get there because it's expensive. The timber is expensive. The tiles are expensive. They are way, way expensive. So these things are, these two stages are stages that may make you think twice whether you want to build or not. But if you have proper planning and uh, find and source for material and do layby, it may be easier. It will look less you won't feel the, the, the stress or the depression of getting the material required for these two stages because they are... Okay, guys, if you have watched the video to this point, I'm sure you are one of the person who is invested in constructing or who want to construct a structure in Zimbabwe. I can say do it. Do not change your mind because of what I've said. These are things that you come across. Um, I'm not saying you should expect them, but I'm saying these are things that 
you may or may not come across it depends on who is doing the job for you and it also depends on your planning and how you are planning to build so in this case i would say if you have reached this point guys in this video and you haven't subscribed to the channel guys please just subscribe to the channel hit that like button share this video to other people that you know are in the process of planning to uh, construct a house in Zimbabwe or in any other parts of Africa I think is the same things that we encounter in Zimbabwe are the same things you may encounter in your country and also I would like to know if you are not from Zimbabwe where are you watching me from where is your project in what are you doing in your country and what are some of the challenges that you meet when it comes to constructing in your country in Zimbabwe these are my experience what according to you yeah, are some of the things that I've met some of the challenges that I've met in my journey to uh, into construction like I said this is my second structure and I've met this um, these problems in my first project that I've done like 10 years ago now 10 years later I am constructing another and I'm facing some of them which made me realize that okay this problem can re okay but I want to warn some of you guys so that you may be aware and it can help you and save your pockets and save you from a lot of depression because there are moments that you can feel like okay guys I'm just halting everything I'm going to stop or you may feel like everyone is stealing from you or you may not trust people who are doing this for you but these are some of avoidable problems that you can deal with before you even start building your, your your house and you may enjoy the house when it's done but I know every house has a story everybody will have their own story on their journey to constructing a house in Zimbabwe or anywhere else in the world I want to know your story guys let me know in the comment section what challenges did you face when you were constructing yours or what challenges are you currently facing while least you're constructing your house because I know there are some who are in the comment section right now that mm, there are some of you who are watching this video right now who are in the process of constructing their own houses in Zimbabwe or anywhere else in the in the world I'm not I want to say you are not alone the problem that you are facing right now or you're currently facing right now everyone here have gone through them or is going through them so you're not alone that alone should let you know that you are doing the right thing you are on the right track and if you can avoid some of them please do if you can advise other people share with them this video so that they can learn and they can be prepared for what's to come and uh, you know you never know who can be helping with this just share the video with other people and subscribe to the channel for more as I'm gonna be sharing a lot of my experience and the process where we are and the improvement and the progress on my current dream house project in Zimbabwe thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video it's goodbye for now bye Happy building!